Even though it can be quite nice to see Christmas decorations at the stores, the malls, and so forth, and lights popping up in all the neighborhood houses, still we are in the season of Advent and not of Christmas just yet. The Christmas season starts, well, at Christmas. But for these few weeks that we have left, Christmas is in the air, not Advent. And when it comes to the secular world that surrounds us, Advent is a word you never hear. And in our Catholic Church, we're celebrating Advent, but in the world, society is already celebrating Christmas. So what's the problem with that? I mean, am I going to get all upset because Christmas music is blasting nonstop 24 hours a day and it's not December 25th yet? No, of course not. Here's the problem, though. The preparation for Christmas that the world is doing is commercial, it's material, it's a secular preparation. And all that prep is drowning out the voice of Advent. You see, we need Advent to give us our focus, but not to fear. Here in the second Sunday of Advent, we have three Advent voices speaking to us from the scriptures, and all three have a special gift for us. The first Advent voice comes from the prophet Isaiah from our first reading. Now Isaiah lived during a time when Israel had some very weak and very wicked kings. He was a prophet who quite boldly proclaimed that one day a new shoot would sprout from the old stump of Israel's kingdom. Isaiah was telling the people to look forward to another king, one like David, who will rely not on worldly advisors, but on God alone. A king who will bring justice and peace, most especially to those who are suffering. Now Isaiah, of course, was foretelling the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus Christ, the King. So Isaiah's message is one of great hope. Now the second Advent voice we have today is that of St. Paul from our second reading. Paul is writing to the Catholic community there in Rome. He's telling them that the day will come when all of the Jewish and Christian uh, Gentiles will come together and live in harmony and in peace. So Paul's message is also one of great hope. And then we have the third Advent voice from our gospel, a voice crying out in the desert, the voice of John the Baptist. Now you could focus on John's appearance, how he looked exactly you would expect someone to look who lived all of his days out in the harsh desert, camel hair clothing, kind of rough looking. You could focus on his diet, locusts and wild honey, okay. You could even focus on how impressive he is because John was kind of tough. Calling the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you brood of vipers. He basically called those religious big shots a bunch of evil snakes, but he was just testing their sincerity. But John had hundreds, perhaps even thousands of people come out to him in the desert, dozens upon dozens who were looking for a new direction, a new life to the baptism that he gave. So he had to have something to offer, right? Well, John was not just some religious fanatic hanging out in the desert. Coming down the line of the great prophets who came before him like Isaiah, John would become the greatest of all of the prophets. He was so great that St. Matthew, when writing his gospel, he calls John the herald. Back in the ancient world, a herald was a special soldier who would follow the king into battle. Once victory had been won, the king would tell the herald to ride back home and announce to the people the good news. So you can imagine the people back home would be anxiously awaiting the coming of the herald. And once he came and would announce to them the good news of victory, then the people would have an anticipation for the victorious king to come home. They would have their own advent experience. Because remember, the word advent means the arrival of somebody important the coming of the king. That's exactly what happened. John the Baptist, the great herald, announces to all of us, to all the people, the Messiah, the great king, is coming. And sure enough, here comes our Lord Jesus Christ. But notice something very interesting. What's the actual message that John the Baptist, the herald, brings to the people? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now notice, he didn't say to the people, guys, no worries, man, it's all cool. Jesus is coming, he's, he's victorious. Nothing to, nothing to change, nothing to worry about, you guys are good. He didn't say that. He said, repent, 
becomes the kingdom of God. Now the word repent here literally means to turn one's life around. God's call, John is calling all of us, God through him, to conversion. But what's the problem for us here in our modern lives when it comes to conversion? First of all, many people don't see turning their lives around of converting back to our Lord as something that's good news, as something victorious. They're too busy having their fun, living their selfish lives so much so that they really don't even consider turning things around. But the only way we're ever going to win, the only way we're going to be victorious in the end, is to live for Jesus Christ alone. But secondly, without grace, that deep blessing of self-awareness is so difficult for so many people to suddenly stop the direction they're going in, to put on the brakes, and then to purposely turn around, completely turn their backs to all the comforts, the attractions, the distractions that the world is throwing at our faces all the time, and intentionally face our Lord and start following Him. And because people are wrapped up in the false preparation of Christmas, where one's preparing to receive the stuff, instead of preparing our hearts to receive a new and fresh coming of the Lord into our lives, that's what Advent is all about, there's all sorts of things then that can get disconnected during this time of the year. With all the stress going on now, but where to go, what parties to go to, what mass are we going to go to, who do we invite, what are we, what are we supposed to buy, how much is this thing supposed to cost? I mean, I don't really like this person, why do I go out to see him, let alone, let alone buy something for him? It's a little nuts, right? This is the season of not having a holly jolly Christmas. For many people, this is the season of deep anxiety. And if one's struggling with family members or their own sense of self-worth, or not really truly feeling that you're, like you're loved, well, this time of the year is anything but joyful. That's why there are more suicides, more family fights, more heart attacks during this time of the year than any other. We absolutely have to embrace and then live out, not just here at Mass, but during our daily lives, the season of Advent. Because a true Advent will bring us a true Christmas. A true Advent will help us hear the voices, the messages that God wants us to hear. So that brings us back now to the gift that God wants all of you to have on this second Sunday of Advent. So, what did Isaiah, with his message of a future king that would come and make everything right, and Paul, with his message that all people of Christian heart will live in unity and peace, and John the Baptist, the herald, telling all of us that the kingdom of God is very near, what do all those messages have in common? Hope. Hope is the gift God wants all of you to have today. But so many people struggle with hope because one major piece is missing in their lives, so they can't keep hope. Well, you're going to get that gift today, too. It's two for one Sunday, guys. You can get double the blessing here today. Pope Benedict XVI once said this, those who have the gift of waiting will always receive the fullness of the gift of hope. God wants you to have that gift today, too, because too many people can't wait. They don't want an Advent season, a season of silence and quiet anticipation of the coming king. They want Christmas, and they want it now. But those are people with little or no hope. The one who can wait with peace, with grace, is the one who will have the greatest of hope because they know God keeps his promises. Everything will be fine. In the end, we will be saved. We just have to wait for the right time, the time of fulfillment. But you, do you guys know, you have any idea how much better off you are compared to the people before the coming of Jesus? They had to wait for the Messiah pretty much on their own, by themselves. As you are waiting for Jesus to move in your lives in a powerful way, doing your best to be patient and to be watchful, you have the Holy Spirit waiting with you, being patient, being watchful. God is waiting with you. 
And there's the beautiful paradox. God is helping you wait for God. So in a very real way, as you're waiting for God to bless you, to change you, to forgive you, to direct you in which way to go, you really don't have to wait because he is already right there in your heart waiting with you. How awesome is that? Oh, but wait, there's more. God's incredibly generous to you all here today. If the Holy Spirit is waiting with you, and you look around the church, you see your brothers and sisters here in the faith, and they're also waiting with you, then guess what? You're not going to give up, are you? Don't forget, one reason why many people never see God working in their lives, because they never hang in there long enough for God to show them his power. They get tired of waiting. They give up way too soon. See, God, see, you think he's late. No, oh, man, he's on time, baby, okay? But see, why is he on time? Why, why do you think he's, he's delayed? Because God doesn't want you, his children, to be spoiled brats, to whine and complain if you don't receive everything right now. He wants us to develop faith, perseverance, character, strength. He wants us to appreciate the gifts he gives us, and that just takes time. But there's one more thing, there's something else. Patient waiting, fully living out Advent in silence, it exposes our idols, the false gods we've been putting our attention toward and not toward the real God. So patiently waiting in hope brings to an end the thinking that we're in control. We're not in control, man. Stop thinking that way. And it forces us to cry out to God. But once we do cry out to God, we're ready to turn around. We're ready for the complete conversion. Because God doesn't waste our waiting. He uses it to shape us into the image of his son. So thank God for the gift of Advent, and thank God for the great gift of hope. As St. Clement of Alexandria once said, if you do not hope, you will not find what is beyond your hope. There's so much more that is beyond. We just have to wait for it. But not for long. The herald has spoken. The victory has been won. And the great king is coming to share his victory with you.